look at that. No hook needed. Look at that gorgeous snake. Once again, not an animal that, that really has any inclination to bite for no reason. Now, of course, these animals will bite if they feel threatened, uh, but wouldn't you? Their venom is a precious resource that they use to procure their prey. Love this. These are the types of experiences I live for. Rattlesnakes. These venomous snakes are infamous for their dangerous bites and namesake rattle. From the well-known Western Diamondback, to the widespread timber rattlesnake, these animals have made quite a name for themselves in the New World. Now, most people assume that because these animals are venomous, that they have some innate desire to seek humans out and harm us. But this could not be further from the truth. Rattlesnakes are among some of the most interesting and unique venomous snakes we are lucky enough to observe here in the Americas. And they have actually adapted to help us avoid their bites. That's right, the rattle on a rattlesnake has the sole purpose of warning predators from approaching too close. These are not aggressive animals, but defensive ones, and most species are quick to flee at the first chance they get. So today I'm taking this hypothesis to the extreme. I'm setting out to find a rattlesnake to showcase just how little these animals are interested in going out of their way to harm us. How will I accomplish this? By holding a rattlesnake in my bare hands. Will this turn out how I hope? Or was this an incredibly stupid idea? Stay tuned to find out. Okay, everybody, welcome back to Jack's World of Wildlife. Now, in today's episode, I'm going to be searching, perusing, creeping through some beautiful forest here in the South Central US. And I'm hopeful to find one species in particular. Today, I'm looking for one of the smallest rattlesnakes in the world, especially here in the South Central United States. I am looking for the Western pygmy rattlesnake. Now, as the name might suggest, these animals, even as adults, are dwarfed by a lot of their other pit viper cousins. So hopefully we can find one, and hopefully we can make this episode unscathed. So let's see, let's poke around and observe, and hopefully we can find one of these absolutely spectacular venomous snakes. Let's go. Now, pygmy rattlesnakes spend most of their time in ambush. These animals are usually tightly coiled up, relying on their broken up patterning to camouflage themselves from their potential prey. They're gonna be locked like a spring, waiting for frogs or lizards or small rodents to come by and then bam, they release that tension, exploding forward and biting and injecting their prey with venom. However, during some parts of the day, these animals will also move around, perhaps to find new cover, new places to hide, or maybe even new hunting grounds. So today I'm scanning for any signs of these animals, whether they are coiled in ambush or out on the crawl looking for somewhere else to be. So hopefully we can find one. Oh, is that a hog Oh my gosh, no! <laughs> that is my second ever Western pygmy rattlesnake. Oh, and it's such a cute one. Second, I thought it was a hognose. There's hognoses that we've seen in this area. This is the first one I have seen here. This is a Western pygmy rattlesnake. Now this beautiful, beautiful snake right here. Oh my gosh. And it's got, actually, you can hear the rattle. Sometimes when you come across these, their buttons are so small. The buttons are the little um, 
uh, specialized scales and, and, and components at the end of the tail that rattlesnakes use to actually make sound. Uh, sometimes they're too small on these little pygmy rattlesnakes uh, to actually make a discernible noise. Let's see if we can get this lovely, lovely little... No way! This is too cool. Now this lovely, lovely, lovely little snake is one of the smallest venomous snakes that we have here in North America. Um, of course, an indication with that name, pygmy rattlesnake. Oh, this is a spectacular little snake. You're so, so, so adorable. You can see that this snake has a little miniature rattle at the end of its tail. And we'll get some awesome shots of that because this is one of the most beautiful Western pygmy rattlesnakes I have seen. What the heck is it doing? Look at it, it's like corkscrewing around my hook. You're odd, you're, you're funky. You're an interesting little creature, aren't you, a cretin? Let's slide you back down into a position that's actually normal for a snake to be in. <laughs> Weirdo, careful. But these are absolutely spectacular venomous snakes. One of my favorites to come across, just simply because of the fact I've not really come across these very often. Um, they can be difficult for me to personally find because um, a lot of times that I see them are kind of out and about. Uh, my previous find, if you remember that uh, video we found up in uh, Oklahoma, and it might have been a little bit bigger than this, but this beautiful kind of grayish pink color with that lovely kind of dorsal stripe on the top. But as you can see, even being a venomous snake, even being a rattlesnake, this is not an animal that uh, is aggressive. This is not an animal that wants to hurt you. Um, he's just like trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> he's so cute, he's so cute. Look at this cute, cute, cute snake. Wow, that is so awesome. These are, being one of the smallest venomous snakes in North America, of course, that makes them one of the cutest. Man, these are just such, such cool snakes. This is actually the longest rattle I've ever seen uh, on a pygmy rattlesnake. But this one's really, really, really cooperative. Uh, this is a great ambassador for its species. Just once again, without any shadow of a doubt, proving that these animals are happy to just go about their lives. These are not malicious creatures. There's no reason to kill this type of animal on your property. They, they take care of all sorts of stuff. They'll eat lizards, they'll eat frogs, they'll eat mammals once they get big enough. Um, Things like rodents that can carry fleas, that can carry disease, that can bring ticks to your yard. Uh, so these are very, very beneficial to have and they're very extremely important members of the ecosystems to which they belong. And he's super calm. I mean, really, really, really calm. Take a look at that. No hook needed. That is amazing. This is a cool snake right here. Easily one of my favorite venomous snakes here in North America. Um, now, what, what this one's probably doing is not too hot yet. These are great amphibian and lizard feeders. They're, they're gonna be crawling out, looking for all sorts of lizards and frogs, maybe toads to feed on. Uh, and they are hunting, 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 not only with scent, but with heat pits that they use to sense the thermal, um, the thermal reeds of their prey. Such a cool little snake. Look at that. He's got this, the cutest little rattle. I don't know if you can even hear that at home. It's just like a dzz, dzz. <laughs> Look at that underbelly too. Even some of that pink behind there. Ooh, careful. But look at that gorgeous snake. Once again, not an animal that, that really has any inclination to bite for no reason. Now, of course, these animals will bite if they feel threatened, uh, but wouldn't you? Um, wouldn't you bite if you felt threatened by a large predator or something like that? Um, they are more than capable at protecting themselves. They do have a, a very uh, spicy venom, I would say, uh, that they can use to defend themselves. But uh, as long as they feel comfortable, like how she feels now, um, that shouldn't be, shouldn't be the case. It's okay. Look at that. And you can see like this animal's perfectly camouflaged 
all these spots and stripes kind of help conceal her as she moves across the forest floor. This gray, this red, this brown, this all kind of blends into the amalgam of colors on the forest floor here uh, in the southern United States. These pine needles, these oak leaves, you can pretty much find every single one of these colors that appears on this snake uh, on the forest floor. So it helps kind of obscure them not only from their prey, uh, but from their predators as well. Look at that. Now, of course, I don't recommend free handling. That's the term that this is, holding a venomous snake without equipment. Uh, but a lot of times I feel like I want to do this to show you all at home just how unlikely these animals are to, to bite you uh, when you give them space. Um, these animals are, once again, not aggressive. They're defensive. And a lot of times bites happen when people feel threatened by these venomous snakes and feel the need to kill them. And that's when those, alt when those altercations take place, that's when a lot of those bites happen because you're getting close enough to the snake and you're trying to actively harm the snake that not only does it feel threatened, but it's close enough to harm you back. Uh, and that's why these animals, these animals are completely harmless outside of their strike range. If you don't get close enough to these animals, they're not big, they're not long. Um, this animal probably has a strike range of about a third to 50% of its body length, which is, not very long. This is one of the smallest venomous snakes in North America, once again. Um, so these animals, careful, buddy. These animals uh, are not really inclined uh, to bite. Their venom is a precious resource that they use to procure their prey. So they don't really like to waste it, even on predators. In fact, that is where that rattle comes into play. He's letting me know, hey, I don't want to waste my venom on you, but I can if I need to. And that is the perfect encapsulation of venomous snakes. Now, of course, that's not always the case. There are some species that are a little more defensive than others, a little more quick to bite, but for the vast majority of individuals, that is their main mode of defense, fleeing, warning you, holding their ground, threat displays, not quite going straight for the bite because they need that venom. It's a precious resource. They need that to actually hunt and procure and partially digest their prey. That is the main purpose of that venom, not as defense, but as procurement for food for these beautiful, beautiful animals. I am so happy that she's being so cooperative. Just take a look at this snake. Is that not the coolest little creature ever? You're almost tempted to give it a kiss on the mouth. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. That might be testing fate a little bit. That probably goes a little overboard on my uh, willingness to prove that these are not uh, not aggressive animals. Uh, but a lot of people think, oh, you're crazy, you're being reckless. Um, I have been working with venomous snakes for a very long time. Uh, I would say pygmy rattlesnakes in, in, the, in the wide scope of snakes I've worked with are at the very, very bottom of dangerous venomous snakes that I have worked with. Things like king cobras, things like um, Malaysian blue coral snakes, and an array of other species um, kind of put this one to shame in a way, uh, but that doesn't make them any less special or any less exciting to capture in the wild. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. This is a good sized one as well. <laughs> um, despite the name Pygmy Rattlesnake, I've seen uh, a handful of really, really nicely sized um, Western Pygmy Rattlesnakes. They can even get a round small copperhead size. Um, but technically this is one of our smallest venomous snakes here uh, in the Southern United States. But easily one of the prettiest. I mean, once again, look at those ventrals. Woof, 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 careful. Look at that. Is that not the coolest little snake you've ever seen? Oh, he's so precious. He's so sweet. Look at him. Look at him. Maybe we'll give him a little bit of a kiss before we let him go today. Actually, I'm going to kiss him. I am. I can't. I can't resist. Look at him. He's such a temptress. Oh, perfect. Here, we'll get, we'll get a close-up. We'll get you a close-up of that, folks. Look. A few little kisses for a few little snake. Love this. These are the types of experiences I live for. Being one with the danger. Now, once again, do not do this. Do not, do not, do not. Um, free handling can, of course, be dangerous, especially if you don't understand snake behavior. Even if you do, of course, there are fluke accidents that can happen. 
but I'm keeping close eye on this beautiful, beautiful snake. I'm keeping my movements small, controlled, and calm. And the snake has realized I'm no predator. I'm really no different uh, than its terrain. However, once again, should this animal feel threatened, it will defend its life uh, with everything it's got. That includes fangs, that includes venom. Well, we've had a lovely time with our beautiful little pygmy rattlesnake. She's super cute, she's super sweet, and we love her so much. So once again, my friends, not dangerous animals by any means. I should make like a, like a fireman calendar. It's okay, cutie, you're fine. You know, like a little bit of like a, hey, venomous snake. She's just like, oh, this place is kind of warm. It's comfy here. I like the merch. This merch is pretty sick. This is a great, uh, great little um, ad advertisement, as uh, those in the UK might say. She's so cute and sweet. Okay, sweet lovey. We're trying to let you go. Look at that, folks. Not an aggressive animal at all. Oh, and there she goes, back into her environment where she will go to live many, many years as a very cute, healthy, and awesome pygmy rattlesnake. Goodbye, I, I, I love you. I love you. Oh, is she going for my arm? Is she going to bite me? No, of course not. Why? Because she's an animal that deserves space, respect, and every once in a while, if a Jack's World of Wildlife crew member is in the immediate vicinity, some snuggles. Too cool. <coughs> my hook is very sweaty. I could not hold on to it. And just as soon as it appeared, it disappeared back into its beautiful natural habitat. Oh my gosh, this was definitely an episode for the books. Easily one of my all-time favorite episodes to have filmed. We had a lot of fun with that stunning, I believe it was a male western pygmy rattlesnake. And I'm hoping that you all enjoyed and learned something about this beautiful, beautiful reptile. But sadly, my friends, although we've had so much amazing, titillating fun and such a unique and worthwhile experience together, all things on Jack's River Wildlife are of course finite and must therefore come to an end. So my friends, I'm so sorry if I tip my hat to you if you made it all the way to the end. Thank you so much for watching. It makes all the difference. Without views, my channel would be unwatched. And that's just something we can't have around here. So thank you all for your viewership. Of course, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications, of course, so you don't miss any future posts or uploads, live streams, things like that. Uh, join our channel memberships for exclusive behind the scenes content. I'm working on putting a whole new line of stuff right up on Patreon and channel memberships. Uh, thank you to everybody who's already supporting me in that way, but I'd love to see more of you get over there to see some new stuff. Um, that that's pretty much all I've got for you today. We had a great time with a spectacular animal, uh, absolutely stunning creature. We got some amazing handling out of it and we got in a little bit of a cuddle. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I did. One of my favorites, like I said, one for the books, but uh, I'll leave you with this. I'll see you next week. I've got another great video lined up a week from today. I hope you will all enjoy it and uh, I'll see you then.